Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to part two of the Razor Crest series. In this video, we're going to be going over V-Ray materials with Maya. And specifically, this model that we're using has UDIMs, so that's something I would like to go over. If you are interested in following along with the same model, that is available in the link in the description. And if you're using your own ship model, all the concepts are the same. If you don't have UDIMs, you can just ignore the UDIM tag, but everything else is going to be the same. All right, let's get started. Very first thing, we need to go to the Hypershade. And I hope this is not new material, but we, you might learn something that you didn't learn before. So with V-Ray materials, they are very similar to Arnold materials, but there are some differences. And the very first thing that we want to do is just grab in a standard V-Ray material. So we can just middle mouse click and drag that over, or you can just click the V-Ray material there. And we're going to create a material for the main body. And for this object, there are a few different texture sets that come with it. So if we go back to our assets folder here, I'm going to grab this entire folder and I'm going to pull this into source images, paste it there. And inside our Razorcrest textures, we can see there are a significant number of files. We have 137 items. These are all TIFF files, so they are uncompressed and they're quite large, actually. Some of these are very large. Uh, there's also some JPEGs that you can use, but I recommend using the TIFF sequences. And you really do need to use the TIFFs for the normal maps and height maps, but uh, for color and for doing things like roughness, JPEGs are fine. But when you start using like normals and height data and stuff like that, the compression really does, in many circumstances, hinder the fidelity. So usually JPEGs aren't good for those. All right, so a brief look at these shows us that we have base color and we also have our, we have height, which we may or may not need, depends. We have metalness and we have normals and roughness. And for the surfaces here, we have the greeble, which I'll show you what that is. We have the main material, then we have the glass material. So there's really only three V-Ray materials that we need to create for this. And you might also notice that these have sequences. So these are actually UDIMs. Basically, instead of having to create multiple different objects with different UV sets or have like one massive like 16K image, you can create multiple, uh, I'll just show you this, it'll be easier. If I go to UV, UV editor, you can see that each UV tile has specific parts of the geometry on it. And it's very useful, very convenient. So instead of having to have multiple different objects now, UDIMs allow you to, you know, piece them all together as one as a sequence. So you'll load the base one and then it'll just step forward and grab the next texture for other assignments. So hopefully you've done UDIMs before. UDIMs has actually been around for a long time, but it's only just becoming more popular to use. But uh, we'll be using UDIMs as well. Okay, right, so back to the Hypershade. And we need a V-Ray material for the main material. So we'll just call this Razor Crest Main. That's probably fine. And we'll call this Main Mat. Okay. And because we might have other things called Razor Crest Main later, who knows? And uh, yeah, so we're also going to get rid of this thing here, the property editor. This thing, for whatever reason in Maya, is kind of garbage because it never shows you the full list. We're actually just going to use this on the attribute editor. So to prevent confusion, I recommend clicking this X and then we just get a bigger view of the material viewer and the material viewer. If you hold down the alt key, you can orbit around as you normally would any viewport in Maya. Okay. So this is set to hardware. Hardware is fine. V-Ray sometimes doesn't load or is too slow. And of course we can't use Arnold with V-Ray materials anyway, but we can use hardware. So this is going to be just a quick, you know, approximation of what it's going to be. It's not going to be perfect, but it will give us a good idea. Okay, next we're going to need our attribute editor open. So I'll pull this over here and then we'll grab, then we'll be able to see all of our different material channels. Okay, so if you are familiar with Arnold, Arnold does have a few different names. And there's also a difference with V-Ray materials in that they support PBR workflows, but you don't have to. So it's it's kind of a weird mix. We are going to be using a PBR workflow for this. Uh, PBR is just physically based rendering. And PBR itself is a specific workflow. 
So you'll find that most render engines actually do work in a physically based way. So V-Ray, even if you're not using the PBR workflow per se, it's still physically based. So it's kind of a misnomer that if you're not using PBR, you're doing everything wrong. However, uh, PBR was made to simplify the number of textures that you need. So it's faster for things like games or real-time rendering, but it's also to make it a little bit easier to use. That said, PBR kind of shot off in two branches. There's two different main workflows for PBR. And I find that at least with my own experience, like professional experience, a lot of people do not understand PBR to the same extent. So I hope you leave this class with a better understanding of PBR and some things that you might be doing wrong when it comes to things like metalness, for example. Okay, so I'll explain this as we go. So the very first thing, we need a file. So there's two ways you can do that. Of course, you can grab a file node from down here. Or we can simply click on the material, go into our diffuse color, and then we can load in a file this way. So this is probably easier. So we'll just do file. And if you haven't used the hypershade for editing your materials, the nice thing about it is that you still have your stacked layout like this, like the old 3ds Max compact editor. And I keep bringing up 3ds Max. I have no idea if any of you have ever used that. That's what I started with. Uh, I'm sure some of you out there have used Blender before, and I really haven't used Blender, so can't really compare that. I'll try to keep the comparisons to Max down. But uh, yeah, anyway, so we have our diffuse color, and by default, we have a file node, and the file node is attached to a placement node. So this is so you can do some basic adjustments on rotations and UVs and stuff like that, like if you wanted something to be tiled or way smaller, but still fit on the UVs of the object. You can do that there. And uh, you have your alpha and your color. We have our main material, then we have our shading group. So the shading group allows us to do things like the surface, volume, and displacement. We're not really gonna be doing anything for right now that's not just surface. So we can just use this node right here. I hope this is review, as I said, but uh, if I'm going too slowly over this, I do recommend that you watch this part just to make sure that you're doing everything correctly, because there might be some parts that you you just forget or you might have been doing incorrectly before. So this part is gonna be pretty simple. We can click on the input connection, so that little arrow, and then grab our first file. We're gonna go inside our RC textures and then we're gonna grab our first file for base color. So for a UDIM, you're gonna see 1001. This is gonna be the first one, like that. And by default, this is only gonna load in that first one. To get the UDIM, what you do, you highlight this number right here, and I'll, I'll zoom in on this so you can see this a little bit better. And then we want to replace that with the following. So you do less than sign or greater than sign, whichever one that is, and then the UDIM, UDIM, and then you do a greater than sign. So that is what tells V-Ray, tells Maya that this is actually a UDIM, it's a sequence, you need to load in all of them, not just that first one. You can click reload. And of course, I never even attached this to the vehicle. So let me do that really fast. I'm going to select everything. I'm not going to select the glass, deselect that. And I'm going to deselect these greebles over here, which are these little just bits of detail. Uh, so basically, everything except the windows and the greebles. And then I'm going to go back to our hypershade, right click over the razor crest main, and then do assign material to viewport selection and that will automatically add it here okay so when you apply that you unfortunately will not notice that any of your udims are on and uh, as to the best of my knowledge this is simply due to the fact that v-ray does not display them in the viewport or maya does not display them properly in the viewport for v-ray materials unfortunately can't really see them uh, I, I think that arnold udims show up but uh yeah, so you really just have to render it just to make sure that everything is good. Uh, we're not gonna render just yet. We're gonna make the rest of our materials and then we'll get to that part. So one other thing that you can do, if you missed that last step where we went over how to apply the, the material, you can also just select all your geometry here, right click over it, go to assign existing material, and then you can just say, hey, razor crest main, done. Okay, likewise, on creating a material, for example, this glass, you could right click over it, say, assign new material, go to V-Ray and then say V-Ray MTL. 
and then we can call this razor crest glass mat like that and then we could do the same thing for the greebles so these right here and with Maya, if you just click the G key, you're automatically going to get your last action, which is assign new material, B-Ray material, and then we'll call this Razor Crest Greebles Mat. So the Greebles are just like bits of detail that's, I mean, these are probably functional or supposed to be functional, but they're just little bits of stuff to make it look more detailed. Honestly, that's what a Greeble is. And next we can go back to our Hypershade and then do the rest of the materials. So we're going to go back to our main material here. And if this is cluttered in your Hypershade, you can simply right click over the one you want, hold it down, graph network, and then you can just clear out everything else. Also going to make this shader ball a little smaller and uh, just move that to the side. Okay. So one thing that it is important that you start doing is every time you add a file node, it's just going to say file one, but file one doesn't mean anything. So let's just call this razor crest base color. Base color is the same thing as albedo, which is the same thing as diffuse color in most circumstances. There are very specific use cases of things that aren't albedo or aren't diffuse or aren't base color. But for the most part, if it's just the color image, I think color is the most sensible thing to call it. If you're in PBR, you call it albedo, whatever. Okay. They're pretty much the same thing. And in our case, they are the same thing. V-Ray by default calls this diffuse color. So whatever, base color, diffuse color, albedo, doesn't matter. Next, we need one for our roughness. There was a, a question, by the way, on the surveys before I forget. Uh, there was a question on here that said, do all materials have reflections? And a shocking amount of you said no, but they do. Every single material has a reflection. So hopefully you were like, oh, well, Lambert's don't have materials. And if you're like, oh, Maya materials, okay, you get a pass. But if you're talking about like what I meant was real life materials, every real life material has reflections. So you always have to have reflections. If you want your CG to look good, it needs to have reflections. Uh, there's someone always brings up and like, if, if I'm actually in class, Vanta black, well, Vanta black is like pure black. So let me just show you this. So Vanta black is like this super, super black paint. And it's like the most unreflective. It just absorbs like every single amount of light, like 99% of light or something. Uh, it still technically doesn't reflect all of it. 1% uh, of light, it doesn't reflect or point. 0.1% of light, whatever it is. This is like a really rare exception. And this honestly looks like you're doing some kind of matte holdout object, uh, which we will be using probably later on in this class. Like it looks like someone cut that matte out. It's not normal as a cool science trick, but if you're trying to do CG, unless you're making Vanta black, it's going to have reflections. So you always need to include it. Now with V-Ray, roughness is not on by default. Roughness for the diffuse color is something different. This is if you have like a thin coat of dust or something and you just want to make it look like the diffuse color has some other surface on it, basically. That's what roughness does. Uh, it's not really, it's definitely not PBR for the workflow. It's just an additional thing that you can use. We're going to go down to the reflections though. And you'll notice that V-Ray by default uses glossiness. So glossiness is basically which areas of a material have a diffuse highlight or a glossy highlight, like a really sharp highlight. But roughness is what PBR uses and roughness is just the inverse of glossiness. So if you ever get a glossiness map, all you have to do to switch it to roughness is invert it. And that is, that's it, you're good to go, okay? But for that, we are going to click use roughness. And now you can see this is reflection roughness. So the only thing to kind of be mindful of here is that A, you are using a roughness map in roughness. If it's a glossy map, you can't put it in roughness. You got to put it in glossiness. But uh, you can always go into Photoshop and invert it, or you can invert it in Maya as well before you even get into the material. Whichever way you like to do it doesn't really matter. But uh, just remember which way is which. And then remember that the roughness up here for the diffuse roughness is something completely different. Okay. Also, self-illumination is an older way of saying emissive. So usually PBR says emissive, V-Ray, and some renderers say self-illumination. It's the same thing. 
Okay. Uh, we are going to be using metalness in a moment, but for right now, we're going to leave that on. All right. So for reflection roughness, we're going to click on the little checkerboard, get a file, and then we're going to go into image name. So on image name here, go to our RC textures, and now we're going to go and load in the main material roughness. So we've got to scroll down here, and that's going to be right here. So the first one right there. Actually, it doesn't really matter which one you load because none of the numbers are important. Because we're always going to replace it with that UDIM tag. And then we can click reload. Now, this is very, very important that you do this. And we've got to change our color space. And this is going to be different to what you might have been used to before because of ACES. So ACES has these specific profiles. And hopefully you guys can see these. They kind of go off the screen, sorry. Uh, but for color space, if you made it in Photoshop, by default, color images are going to be sRGB. But anything that is technically it's considered non-color, so if it's just grayscale, you can have a grayscale color map, but it has three specific channels. Grayscale maps, by default, should only have one. Technically, you could have a grayscale image that is sRGB, but anything going into a reflection glossiness channel or reflection roughness, Maya will interpret it as a different type of image. And this, for some reason, did not update to roughness. It says roughness here, but it doesn't say there. Strange. Uh, that is actually roughness, so don't worry about that. Anything that goes into roughness or glossiness will not have an extra gamma curve on it. So I'm going to have another video explaining linear workflow and what gamma is and why it's important that you get this right. But basically, it doesn't expect this to be sRGB, which is a gamma profile. So you got to say, hey, don't interpret this as sRGB. Okay, it's kind of annoying that we have to do this, but uh, we're going to just do it by default. Maya also has a specific set of rules that you can use. So anything that has roughness in the name, it would automatically just put it in the right place. But we're going to do this all manually, and then I can show you how to set up rules if you're interested. Okay, so... Color space, we're going to do utility raw. You could also say in most circumstances, scene linear, and we're going to say scene linear rec 709, and not this one that says rec 7 2020. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. It should say scene linear rec 709 sRGB. Kind of goes off there. And that's because there's no color in it. So scene linear would preserve whatever color primaries are being used. Color primaries are just what tells the computer what color you're actually trying to use. So different profiles have different primaries, which are, are different slots of color, avail available color. So we're basically stripping the, the, the double correction that we would normally get with a double gamma curve. So we're just saying, hey, just you don't need to interpret this as a color image or sRGB. It's going to be linear. I will explain more of this later, but that is very important. Uh, so one thing to note is, so you can't place this base color in multiple slots because the interpretation of the color space is different depending where it goes. Another thing that I wanted to point out here, by default, Maya will say, hey, your, your out alpha is going to be your reflection glossiness. And that's all great and everything, except for if your file does actually have an alpha channel, it's not going to show the right value here. It's just going to be whatever your alpha is. So there is a way to mitigate that. You can click on the file and then go to your color balance and then say the alpha is actually luminance. So if you're familiar with After Effects, which you should be by now, hopefully, but if we start talking about luma mats versus alpha mats, so luma mats are using a mat that's just the black and white information or grayscale information. That's what the luma is. Alpha is where there's transparency and where there's not transparency. So instead of saying alpha, we're saying, hey, use luminance instead. So we'll use your color channel or whatever channel it uses as the luminance instead. That is one way of doing it. Uh, if you want to be absolutely sure that you're doing this right, and what is probably more common practice is to delete that and then just pick your red, green, or blue channel and plug that into your roughness or re your reflection channel, essentially. Uh, this is also useful when you start packing materials. So if you ever do any game dev stuff, a common workflow is to put four images in one file to save space. So you could have 
an image for your metalness, one for roughness, one for AO, and one for displacement or something like that. You could have all of those channels laid out. This is pretty common though. By default, Maya wants to put it in alpha. That's okay. But if you want to do this, that's okay too. If you want to do out alpha though, I do recommend that you remember to do this. Otherwise you might realize you've done something wrong later. So alpha is luminance is very important. Okay. But if you don't want to do that, just hook up one of these other channels. Okay, next. So this is probably one thing that you may have done wrong in the past. It's kind of a convoluted thing, to be honest. It could be easier to set up materials, but you will find this in pretty much any software that you use. One day, we probably won't have to do this and it would be intelligent enough to figure it out. But the reason why there are different color spaces is because there are different workflows for different people and what might be common to you and honestly probably is the most common way might not be common to other workflows. Like there are workflows where everyone uses purely linear files, even for color, and you would never use sRGB, for example. So it just really depends on the workflow. Okay, so uh, we are going to go into the, I'm actually not gonna put metalness on just yet. I wanna show you what that's gonna do, but we are gonna add in the normal map in a second. So for the, normal map, we go down to bump, and unlike Arnold, we do not have a specific node, like an AI normal node that we have to plug in. V-Ray can just do it directly, which is very nice. So you can just say, this is a normal map, and usually it's tangent space, so that's fine. Then click on our input, and then go to file, and then we're going to grab the normal map. So we're going to do that right here. And then once again, we're going to grab the UDIM. And for normal maps, because there is color information, it's just not used as color per se. Like we never need to look at it. We just say utility raw. So it's whatever that happened to be made in. It's, we're not doing any other profiles. We're just taking the image as is and not doing anything else to it. So technically you could embed a color profile into a normal map and that would screw you up. but probably you probably haven't done that and you probably use something like substance designer or substance painter or something and that will export everything properly so raw is usually what we do there okay right so that was kind of convoluted but uh let's go to our other materials i'm probably gonna speed this part up because it's literally the same process and it's a little bit lengthy so um but there's a couple of things i wanted to show you if you want to do those things a little bit more quickly inside the hypershade you can click the tab key. The tab key opens up a little file search dialog and you can just do file and then you can say file texture. It automatically creates that for you, which is really nice. If you wanted to plug in something like uh, your diffuse, and by default, I don't know why this is all shortened, but you can grab the full list just by clicking these little buttons there. And then we can go to our diffuse color or it's actually just called color, it's the, the node color here. If you open this up, it's diffuse color there. But we can just say, hey, out color goes to color right there. And then we can load in our color map for, and this is going to be for our greebles. This is a much shorter UDIM, but it's a UDIM nonetheless. We still have to add in the UDIM tag. And then we have to do the same thing. And I forgot to name some of these files here. So this is going to be variables color. And I know this is kind of annoying, but we should do this here as well. So grab this, paste this here. And then this is going to be roughness. normal and then just to keep the same convention i'm just going to call this color cool graph network and then we can then we can do the same thing so file texture grab the roughness once again need that udim tag Color space, raw. And then for this, I'm going to say alpha is luminance. 
plug in the alpha into reflection glossiness. But remember, we need to switch this from glossiness to roughness right here. This changes for whatever reason, this does not. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And next, we got to do the same thing for our normals. So we got to grab another file here. We're going to do out color into our bump. And we need to tell V-Ray that this is not a bump map. It is a normal map, so it handles it properly inside that node, or you can just click here. These kind of work hand in hand, but whichever one you prefer, like you can do literally everything you want to right here, but it is nice to use this. Sometimes it's more convenient and you will of course need it for the color space to select which one to use, but this one is going to be raw. And then we're going to grab our Greeble here. And by the, by the way, just, I want to show you that. Anytime that you replace an image, by default, Maya will just go, oh, you changed your file, let me change the color space. It's like, thanks, Maya. So it is useful to create rules so you don't have to do that, but uh, that's what you have to do by default, which is kind of annoying. So, raw, right there. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna copy and paste this name in here. This one's gonna be roughness. This one is, this one is going to be normal. We're going to close that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start rendering this because I think it's easier to, to create the glass while we can see what's happening. But for the rest of it, I, I we kind of wanted that information already on there. So we had something to look at, but uh, yeah, let's start rendering this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. In the next video, we're going to, going to continue with V-Ray materials, but we're also going to do some lighting as well with HDRIs and a V-Ray Sun and Sky system. All right, see you in the next video.